What's going on guys? My name is Ben and welcome back to another video. I am now two weeks into my quarantine lockdown and I hope everyone around the world is doing okay. So what I thought I would do is bring you guys a classic five things that I hate about my car video. Now this car is of course a 987.1 generation 2005 Porsche Boxster S. Now although the title does say five things that I hate about the car, it was very, very difficult to try and think of five things that I hate because it is purely that good. And if you wanna watch the other video with this car, which is five things that I love about the car, you can do so by clicking the card in the top right-hand corner. However, let's jump into the video because no car is perfect. And these are just five things that I've found that bug me about my car. So before I start this video, I just wanna say thank you to everyone for the kind words when uh, you guys watched my head shave video. Uh, turns out you guys actually quite like my shaven head and uh, also it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. In fact, I also kind of like it, but also I just wanted to say a big thank you to LA Carbon Fiber for sending me out a carbon fiber phone case for my Samsung S10. These carbon cases are brilliant and they look absolutely fantastic as you can see. These are also available for iPhone, Samsung and Huawei and they are just releasing the new cases for the new Samsung S20. If you're interested in one of these cases, you can get 10% off by simply clicking the link in the description down below. So make sure you get your case today and thank you to LA Carbon Fiber. Let's kick start things off with the interior of the Porsche box dress. Now the first thing that I... So the first thing doing? that I hate it's about my, my video. Porsche box dress. No, 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 no. I wanna, I wanna help the video. No, it's my video. Yeah, but I, I, I know you help. wanna help, but maybe you can oh, okay. help me film okay, while yeah. jumping at the I end. Understand. All right, I just get out, I get it, car. I get it. Yes, yeah, I know it's car. your car as well. well. Get out, get out. I might right. get you at the end, all right? Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. The world isn't ready for two bends. It's not. All right, thank you. Anyway, so the first thing that I hate about this car is the manual roof release mechanism. In cars similar of this age, uh, such as like a BMW E85 Z4, you push one button, the roof unlatches automatically and goes down, which is much, much simpler and easier. Uh, unfortunately on this car, you have this big uh, kind of handle. You have to press, grab this handle, pull back before you are able to push the button and drop the roof the rear panel raises and the roof folds into it, which is quite cool. It's just a bit of a nuisance. I just wish it was one button to go up and down. As you can see, the roof is now down and it's the same story to go back up. You push the button, up comes the roof. Roof closes, so does the little body panel on the back and you have to grab this big ass handle and lock it before the windows go up. And that just really annoys me. I just wish it was a bit more like the Z4. Whilst we're in the interior, it brings me on to the second thing that I hate about this car. Now this is a bit of an age issue as this technology wasn't really around in 2005, but it's worth mentioning because I certainly didn't realize when uh, I bought the car. It's the fact that the car has no music or even a phone input. Uh, Bluetooth probably wasn't around in 2004, 2005. So you can't connect your phone via Bluetooth. There's not even a aux or a USB or anything like that in here or the glove box. So you cannot connect your phone to the stereo essentially, which is rather annoying. But to get around that, I've brought this little uh, kind of FM transmitter, which plugs into your little aux thing on your phone. So uh, sorry if you have an iPhone, but uh, shots fired. Um, so that wirelessly sends uh, music from my phone to my stereo, which is rather good. And uh, it works really well when it, when it works. I mean, it runs off two uh, kind of AAA batteries and they are both dead. So at the minute, it's just a radio for me. And uh, whilst I'm here, a cool thing worth mentioning about this car is the cup holders. So when I have my music playing on my phone, I feed it into this little cup holder 
and it's like having a phone mount built into your car. Little off topic, but that's really, really cool. Now the third thing that I hate about this car happens around here, which is of course where the engine is. This car is of course a mid-engined layout car and there are some kind of advantages and some kind of disadvantages to what I'm about to say. This being the Boxster S is the 3.2 variant with 280 brake horsepower. You can also get this in a 2.7, which is 240 brake horsepower. Now that brings me on to this car's kind of issue is it feels a little bit like it's lacking power. It doesn't feel all that quick when you accelerate. Um, and I think that's primarily because all the kind of drama and excitement is above 3000 RPM. You try and accelerate anywhere below 3000, then the car's just really, really underwhelming and feels really slow essentially. But once you get over 3000 and you leave it in a lower gear, this car is pretty rapid. It just doesn't necessarily feel rapid. And also being a mid-engine car, the weight distribution is pretty much bang on. So a good thing is you can smash corners at unreal speeds. It will absolutely annihilate B roads and just stick to the road like glue. However, it is also a little bit boring um, because you've obviously got a lot of weight over these rear wheels. Um, it doesn't really break traction like ever, which good thing, bad thing. It's a little dramaless. If you were to do that in the M3, for example, the back end just snakes down the road, which is dangerous, but it's also really, really exciting. So kind of a weird one. It's good at what it does because it's mid-engined and it sticks to the road, but it's also bad because it feels slower than it is and also doesn't ever break traction. So the fourth thing that I hate about this car, and yes, this is the first time I filmed a video, on the floor are these rather clumsy and bulbous looking front fog lights, which I feel just ruin the front end. I think they're too big. And again, it's one of those 2005 design things. Also the bulb inside is like a candle. It just looks hideous in my opinion. And also this one condensates. You can fix this by buying kind of cheap aftermarket, almost daytime running lights, but um, I've seen a few of those on these cars and the fitment isn't great. I have, however, managed to kind of fix the front end by wrapping these gray kind of grills uh, gloss black. You can watch that video by clicking in the top right corner. Uh, so yeah, essentially what I did was wrap these black and add these uh, mesh grill inserts to protect the radiators of against any kind of debris going in. So this has helped the front end massively. It's just this letting it down. Um, kind of, I suppose, to improve this, I may take the bulb out as I don't really use these ever and uh, tint them. So that should fix my issue, but really, really not a fan of those. So the fifth and final thing I hate about this car is the key. Now on a traditional car key, you have a separate button for lock and unlock. However, on this one, we have three buttons, one of them for the rear boot, one of them for the front, and then one for both lock and unlock. And what's irritating about having the same button to tackle two different functionalities is that you never actually know if the car is locked or unlocked. So when you're walking away, you could have unlocked it by mistake. You just don't know. So now if I test it, the car is actually unlocked. And that brings me on to another annoying thing. So maybe six things that I hate about this car is that when you push the button for the front and you're in here getting out your necessary essential beverages whilst you're in quarantine, like so, whilst you're rooting around in the front area, the car will lock itself and sound of a horn, like so. And when you're in here getting out essential bits you need and shopping and bits like that, Having the horn beep at you, because it is somewhere in the front area, makes you absolutely jump out your skin. From the two of us then guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell for plenty of upcoming videos with this car and the M3. Thank you very much once again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>